you know, I saw Agent Force. I did a podcast with your buddy and mine, Mark Benioff. Mark's amazing. Agent Force 2 coming on strong. Um, what do you think about the whole agentic world? Hmm. I'm a huge fan. I think, you know, when you think about what kind, so essentially large language models can be thought of neural sequence models, right? They're very large neural networks. They can be trained on any kind of sequence of things and you can train them both with imitation and with exploration. And so uh, when you think about what are other interesting uh, sequences, you know, in 2019, we, we started 2018, 19, we started on these large language models for protein sequences. So boom, you got biology. But then the very obvious uh, sequence is a sequence of actions too. Uh, and so I'm very excited. Uh, we already have over 50,000 custom agents built on the U.com platform by our users. You can select which LMs you use. Give us uh, give us examples of the agents like that people would use. What are the top? To. So, yeah. for example, you're in marketing. And you say, oh, every time, like every two or three weeks, I get a, a huge uh, PDF file with a bunch of new features and some like like website that uh, describes a new feature. Uh, that uh, product engineering uh, have been shipped. And then I'm tasked to write two email marketing campaigns for specific industries, tasked to write three LinkedIn messages. I have to go out on the web and compare these new features to the competition. So I don't say this is super novel, no one has it, even though other people have it and so on. And what we've done is like, uh, we talk to these marketers and they say, oh, well, just describe that, explain that very well to an agent on you.com and the next week when a new thing comes in, like you just drag and drop that PDF and it just goes through all those steps. It writes the LinkedIn messages for you. It writes the email campaigns for you and you're just done. And then we have journalists who say, well, I need to like research a new thing. I want, I'm supposed to write an article about uh, prostate cancer, like advances. Then I go to these 50 different sources. I read a bunch of research papers and then I put it together. Perfect use case, you know, this is like the kinds of sources you described, like use medical journals only. You can just say that in your prompt. You don't need like a special sort of feature uh, switch on in the UI UX. You just prompt it differently. You explain that and then it writes like more and more of that for you. And then you just need to start comparing. So we have journalists and chief editors and writers that uh, told us that tasks that used to take them multiple days now take them like two, three hours and mm. they're done. Mm. Maybe a last fun one uh, that's relevant for you is we have venture capital firms that say, well, if I get a new data room, I go through 10 steps. I look at net dollar retention. I do CAC LTV ratios, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then you just describe that again and you drag and drop uh, a whole data room into you.com and it just goes through those steps. So whenever it's like knowledge work, you can already automate a ton Can, can of you it. create an agent that says, go out there and raise me a billion dollars of venture capital and go find the companies that are going to be unicorns and invest in those and then just send me the uh, bank account information uh, at that's, the end. That's step two. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my, my description of agentic AI is white collar job description. Yeah, that'll be epic. And then I think the next level will be they actually start taking actions for you. They start booking flights and things like that. Now, the interesting bit is that just like with robotics, like we're going to have an uncanny valley or like just a trough of dis disillusionment potentially. Because when, when I saw like this rabbit R1, for instance, and they, in the demo, they said, oh, I want to book a flight with my four kids to London on these dates. And then boom, 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 now it's done. And I'm like, no way that was real. Because you have so many details, right? Like this hotel, I want it to be close to these kinds of sites I want to see. Uh, and then over time, you change, right? When I was a poor graduate student at Stanford, like on like less than minimum wage, I would have been willing to wait 10 hours for a layover in order to save $200. Now I spend thousands of dollars extra just to have a one uh, stop like or zero stop flight and have a direct flight, right? And so... You need to know all these subtleties of like, when are you willing to wait for how long, how much extra do you pay? And then you, you need to like have much more personalization still um, to make those agents work too. But for knowledge work, you can already automate a lot. Mm. Richard, why haven't we seen yet a kind of an agentic version of a Jarvis that just watches your tasks and says, hey, last time you booked these, you always did this. So are you sure you don't want to do that again? and tracks you and learns from your patterns and therefore that can then represent you more easily. I would have hoped to have seen that by now. Have you seen anything yeah, like that? Give it, give it permission to listen to your phone calls, read your emails, watch you, all of yeah, that. Yeah, there, there are two, two or three problems of why we haven't seen it yet and sort of blockers. Uh, not, nothing impossible to fix, but so number one is you're not allowed to record other people without their consent. So that 
puts a damper on a lot yeah. of things. A lot of countries right. will sue you and like California, like in Europe and, and so on. So, so that's why you can't have it. The second thing is Microsoft actually tried to like launch this where it just watches everything you do on Windows and people just went crazy. They're like, no way. You're going to send a screenshot of every one of my things. People do private things sometimes in their browser. They don't want to share all of that uh, with the world. Never. That, that will be a privacy, like it's just a privacy thing. You need to build an insane amount of trust with those companies. Then you have a lot of AI companies that the, the AI forward, like AI first kind of novel startups, they don't have all the users trust yet and, and that ability to collect all of the data and so on. Um, but then, you know, I think we will eventually get to it. I think someone will be able to like, Apple is very good. They care about privacy and probably more likely you're trusting Apple uh, with you know, everything you might do on your phone. And then the fourth thing is that eventually we're going to have more AI agents surf the web than people. And that is a massive change for how the internet monetizes. Because mm. uh, there are basically a few mm. companies that make money actually selling physical goods like Amazon. But even those companies are getting more and more into the second or main bucket, which is advertisement. Turns out your AI assistant doesn't get distracted when it has to just book a quick flight for work to Utah with this Bahamas like ads to like go <laughs> on your next vacation. And so Expedia, even Amazon makes a lot of money with ads. If mm. you start ignoring all of those, it changes how the internet monetizes. So those companies will try to block all these operators, all these AI agents from just being able to get the work done. And so, you know, these are just like, oh man, you can have the intelligence, but the infrastructure around it will, will slow things down for adoption.